Queen Mary II, the largest ocean liner of the world, is sailing west over the Atlantic Ocean, heading to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. At 5 a.m., the ship arrives at the channel entrance and the Port Everglades pilot will board and guide Queen Mary II to her berth. This afternoon, she will board 2,600 passengers who will sail with her for 24 days to Rio de Janeiro for Carnival. Welcome aboard Queen Mary II. In the Grand Lounge of Queen Mary II are photographs and drawings of all 178 ships that have flown the Cunard flag. And when viewed from a distance, they form a mosaic of the founder of the company, Samuel Cunard. In 1840, the first Cunard ship, the Britannia, set sail from Liverpool to Boston. The journey took 14 days, and the passenger list included 64 brave and determined souls. By the turn of the 20th century, the paddle boats had grown into the great and grand four stackers of the sea. Cunard sailed the largest and grandest ships of the era. Names like the Mauritania, the Aquitania, the Berengaria all meant luxury, style, speed, and size. Cunard moved the rich and famous over the seas, but it was actually the thousands of immigrants in steerage that made the great steamships profitable. By the 1930s, the Depression had weakened the transatlantic trade. But rather than scaling down, Cunard built their greatest ship. It would be the first Cunard queen, the Queen Mary. Her arrival in New York in 1936 was greeted with great enthusiasm. At 81,000 tons, she was the biggest and the grandest ship of her time. She was the fastest ship of the age and held the Blue Ribbon, the prize for the fastest transatlantic crossing for 14 years. It was the Queen Mary that launched a new Cunard style of luxury and elegance. The Queen Mary was the favored ship of the rich and the famous. The Duke and Duchess of Windsor, with 127 pieces of Louis Vuitton luggage, traveled on the Queen Mary each year. Robert Montgomery, Loretta Young, Bob Hope, Alexis Smith, even Mae West, took the Queen Mary to London for work and pleasure each season. Today, the Queen Mary is permanently docked at the port of Long Beach, California. In 1967, Cunard retired the Queen Mary. The city of Long Beach purchased the ship and sailed her all the way around Cape Horn. She was tied up at the Long Beach Pier and has remained there ever since. Her style and elegance speak of a wonderful age of great steamships and the people who traveled on board. In 1938, Cunard launched the second queen, the Queen Elizabeth. She had two stacks instead of three and was slightly larger. But the jet planes soon took the transatlantic business. In 1967, the Queen Mary and the Queen Elizabeth were both retired, and it was assumed that Cunard would simply stop the transatlantic trade. But Cunard looked ahead and built the Queen Elizabeth II, one of the most popular ships of all time. She was launched in 1969. She was a new ship for a new age, and she continued Cunard's transatlantic service until 2004, when she was replaced on the North Atlantic by the fourth queen, the Queen Mary II. Queen Mary II is the largest passenger ship in the world, and she is here in Fort Lauderdale on a break from her transatlantic trade to board passengers for a journey to Rio.